Hey everyone, it's Ben here. We are back with another episode of Conversations. This is episode seven, I believe we're on now. And so today we're joined by Mr. Steve After Buffalo, and as always, Pastor Joel. Yeah. And so today we're talking about uh, Celebrate Recovery, which is a program that has really meant a lot to Steve and is something that Pastor Joel and the church here have been really trying to get behind. And um, it's a program that I think could really help and be very impactful here in Browning. So, Pastor Joel. Yeah, you know, Celebrate Recovery is, if you're not aware of it, you can search for it online and find lots of resources about it. But it's a 12-step program, so if you're familiar with programs like AA or NA, it, it's going to be very, very similar. It's 12 steps, there's eight principles, and they kind of overlap one another. But the idea is it's a Bible-based, faith-based, Christ-centered recovery uh, mm-hmm. program or mission, really. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's been several people who are not pastors or church leaders even per se that that got in touch with me over a pretty short span of time, about, I would say over like a five to six month period of time, people just out of the blue texting me, calling me and and having conversations with me about, hey, you you should really look at Celebrate Recovery. And I really felt the leading of the Holy Spirit to, to go in that direction. And so we started it, we launched it here, what, January? January 9th. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we started and it was going really good and then COVID hit and, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we're trying to see how to relaunch it, but we are going to be relaunching. And dur- during the COVID time, I was meeting one-on-one with people just using the step study. And uh, the fruit from that I've seen just in, in the one young man's life that I've been working with has been phenomenal. Just mm-hmm in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. So I know it's a really effective program, but maybe you could tell us a little bit about what Celebrate Recovery has meant to you. Sure. Well, my name is Steve Apple Buffalo. I'm born and raised here in Browning. Um, Prior to me uh, finding out about Celebrate Recovery, uh, I was incarcerated in federal prison. And during that time I was in prison, I come across the program there and I had taken it and I've been it, I went through it for 14 months and I, Help me find myself and get closer to God. Um, it's a program that basically will help you release things that release and share things to people that you are comfortable with. Now, everything that's said is um, uh, confidential. Confidential. Yeah. Yeah. And you know it's. One of the things that I wanted to bring back to this community because we are we wanting we are wanting to work with the uh, incarcerated that are, uh, that are dealing with hurts, habits, and hangups. Um, you know, we want to get the inmates uh, on the same page as the family members on the outside, so that way, when the inmate gets out, we are trying to slow down the revolving door so they don't go yeah. back to jail. Mm. And <clears throat> we're also going to work with the uh, treatment center. And that there we'll be doing the uh, 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 not the twelve life, steps life, life healing choices. Yeah. yeah, and then that's a eight eight week course. And the, the step study is a twenty five steps that we got to complete. And we got basically a almost a little over three quarters of the way done. I think yeah, we we were into the third book. Third There's four book, books, yeah. and we were into that third book when when COVID shut us down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, like I said, um, it helped me find who I was before before I got into drugs, and and it basically turned my life around a whole 180. And I look forward to helping our people back home. Yeah, you know uh, what you said about hurts, habits, hangups. It's not just for drugs or alcohol. Yeah, for the, for mm-hmm. those people. I think someone was saying. So with CR was saying like only about a third of the people that are going through the the program are actually uh, it's it's they're dealing with substance abuse. With a lot of people, it's they're doing dealing with hurts, hangups, and habits. And when you think about it, I was listening to someone talk about the hurts. How you know we've been hurt by people, yeah. and guess what? We have hurt people. Hmm. And the result of that is it's you know it's like it, we've allowed poison into our lives and what this this program really helps us to do is to shut off that IV that's letting the poison run into our life mm. 
and uh, yeah, it's really that's that's really the heart of it there. It was a program that basically helped me deal with some, some of the trauma that I went through in life because I was holding it in and I wasn't releasing it. And <clears throat> through this program, it helped me open up more because I got comfortable with the people of my surroundings. And before I wasn't comfortable, you know, releasing anything and mm -hmm. it basically just really helped me help me out by just letting things go because it took a lot of stuff off my, my shoulder. I've seen people become like, they're like a whole nother person because you don't just encounter sobriety yeah. with CR, you encounter Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's people that really, they, maybe they've been in the church or they've been around Christianity, but they've never really met Jesus. Mm -hmm. And with CR, that's one of the things I think that you really can expect to find is a, is a real meaningful encounter with Jesus. Closer relationship. Yeah, for reals. So what, what we were doing with CR in January was, let's just talk about a little bit about how uh, the, the meetings would go. Um, and what, you know, someone comes into one of these meetings, what could they expect? Well, they could expect to uh, uh, just be more welcome, I mean, feel welcome that, you know, that they, they can share without being, you know, they shouldn't be ashamed of themselves. You know? Yeah. I um, mean, for me, that's the thing is, I was ashamed to say something about what I did, but now I'm not, you know, and it helped me overcome that. Yeah. And I think that will help a lot of people around here. Cause kind of like what you were talking about yesterday in the other video from episode six about just being able to release that. Yeah. I think there's something healing in that. Yeah. So that's like some, because I don't really know CR at all, and so... What is one of the key elements or aspects of being able to release and being able to let go of like hurts and things like that? Like, what what are some of the things that like you go over in the program to do that? I think a lot of it it comes down to getting rid of denial right off the bat, mm. and and a lot of the early uh, studies that we do or the the meet early on meet, the meetings are going to focus on getting rid of the denial. Mm -hmm. And acknowledging, okay, that my life really isn't where I want it to be. And I don't have it within myself to get it there. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, he's the one that can get me oh, there. Right. And he wants to get me there. He's on my side. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's helpful because you start to see Jesus in a whole new light. And we're inviting people to become honest mm -hmm. with themselves. And in the group, the group dynamic is really helpful, I think, because... And being honest with one another, it kind of coaches us on how to be honest with ourselves. Mm. Yeah. So, Steve, what was one of the, I guess, if there was a moment or a series of moments, I guess, when you were going through the program that kind of was a point where you were like, okay, this is it. Like, it, what was the point of permanent change, I guess, in the program for you? For me, it was getting to know Jesus. Mm. You know, it was much before. I mean, I, I knew Jesus and stuff, but I just never took the time to uh, really study mm. or read mm. the Bible and stuff. And it opened my eyes up. Mm. How, how far in were you? Uh, you had, was it like in the first book, second book? Or? Around in the first book. This is where I start. Yeah, the first book really hits that hard, yeah. doesn't it? It, yeah. it really does. And then the second book really starts to deal with, okay, you've been hurt. And some of that is not your fault. Like if yeah. you were abused or molested, that is not your fault. It's not on you. But we still got to deal with the pain of that. Mm -hmm. And we got to be able to release that. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people too, it's, okay, now let's examine. And we're talking about doing personal inventory. That's the terminology. Yeah. Okay, well, who have I hurt? Mm. And there's a lot of freedom that we get when we can finally let go of that guilt by actually dealing with, okay, you know what, I have hurt people. Mm -hmm. And uh, and being able to deal with that in a really healthy way. Um, what what impact did this have on your family? So, I, I mean, clearly it had a good impact on you, but what about your family? They, they uh, saw a big change because I was really a, a rude person, mm -hmm. I'd say, and then, uh, abusive. And I don't know, I'm just an ignorant person, you know, and it turned my life from around. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, 
you know, I, I treat them with respect. I treat them the way that, you know, I, I love them to death now. You know, I just, they're my best friends now. You know, and before I, it was the substance that I was on, it would just, it turned my life completely around. And That's awesome. I was, I wasn't the person that I am now. Mm. It's awesome how your family was able to see that change. Um, and, and be able to recognize that God was at work in your life. Man. Yeah. So how do, like, because I think <clears throat> with a lot of other programs, as like my my dad is a substance abuse, drug and alcohol counselor, and he's been doing that for 25 years now. And we have a lot of conversations, and I've been in school for similar things, and, and in a lot of studies that I've done, and conversation I've had with him and like growing up seeing counselors and seeing therapists and stuff um, for me personally and this is not you know to, to take away anything from from uh, professional medical counseling or anything like that but for me the key element is Jesus mm -hmm. right like and so in the program the difference is I think when Jesus is made real to you or when the reality of who he is becomes very apparent to you, that's what makes everything else make sense. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, like, I didn't go through Celebrate Recovery, but in just my own personal journey with, with Christ and with God, letting go of past hurts and past things and, and becoming a new creation, um, it's kind of been like a lot of the same principles and th same things that I've learned and seen and have heard about and like have been talked to about like all growing up but they didn't make sense until Jesus was a part of it like they didn't make yeah. sense and they didn't work until Christ became a part of it or he became you know he was in it and so I guess like how how does the program implement Christ into these methods or strategies or you know things of the program well, he's really the center of everything. Um, he's the, you know, like to use the term higher power, because I am powerless to control my hurts, habits, hang-ups, my tendency to do the wrong thing, uh, but he has the power to help me recover. Mm -hmm. And it's all about Christ becoming the center of mm -hmm. our life. And with the step study, at least, you know, there's there, it's about a year-long commitment if you want to go through the full step study. Yeah. And it's really intensive and in-depth. Now, I, as a you know, seasoned person who's walked with the Lord for many years, I've found a lot of benefit just in going through the study myself, just so I'm familiar with the curriculum. Mm -hmm. But I'm going through it like I'm a participant, and I found it was eye-opening to me in, that there was areas of my life that I had actually shut God out of. Mm -hmm. And this is a program that invites you to let Jesus into every aspect of your life. And it really challenges you to do so and be open with Him. Mm -hmm. And I found that to, that was what I found to be really life giving to me, just even as pastor going through this. So, Steve, during the program when you were going through it, what did it look like when you started to realize Jesus isn't a part of this area in my life, or I really need I really need him to be a part of this area of my life? And how did you start making those changes, and what did that look like for you? Well, when I first started the program, <clears throat> as the first part of it is when I found out that I needed Jesus in all parts of my life. You know, without Him, I wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to do it. Uh, he's the only way. Uh, you know, it's basically, it helped me get through the program. So, without God, I wouldn't have been able to. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you can actually go through all four books without really coming to that place because it's mm -hmm. it's not something that hits you you know it hits you with it once and we move on yeah <laughs> it's sent jesus essential through through every every single one of the uh, the, the, the chapters if you will mm -hmm. and uh yeah it's, that's great you know i really appreciate you taking the time to come and uh and, and visit with us a little bit i know that uh we, we've had the opportunity to present this to the jail here that was before COVID. <laughs> yeah, well, I look forward to having this program here and sharing it with our people because I believe this tool is going to help a lot of people here. Yeah. Mm. 
it has been a very impactful ministry, not just uh, in the United States, but worldwide. And especially as in the last few years, it's become very, very uh, effective among a lot of native nations and reservations uh, are beginning to use this tool, this ministry tool. And uh, so I see you got your Native Nations CR shirt on. That's <laughs> awesome. I need to find one of those. <laughs> yeah, our, our goal is to uh, get started here on the Blackfeet Reservation, then move on to the other reservations in Montana and possibly into Canada. So that is one of the things that we are looking forward to doing. So stay tuned. We'll, we'll be sharing more information. I think we're kind of waiting a little bit longer here until school's kind of established. That's when our summer kind of slows down and... You know, we have to get back to living <laughs> the non-summertime fun time. Anyways, once we're ready, we'll, go, we'll make an announcement and we'll be hosting CR meetings and uh, maybe you can come check it out. Look forward to seeing you guys. Well, this has been another episode of Conversations. And yeah, we're going to keep pumping these guys out, baby. So keep staying tuned and tuning in and tune. We'll see you guys next time. Blessings.